everybody, Punisher88 here, coming at you once again with another Thursday review. In keeping in the spirit of Halloween this week, today I'm reviewing Creepy issue number 17. So, to those of you who watch my reviews, you guys know that I like to start with the cover first, so let's check it out. Now, right off the bat, yes, I love this cover. Why? Two reasons. The first one being the artwork. I am a huge fan of horror art, and let's face it, not every artist can pull it off nicely. Here, it's pulled off nicely. And the second reason why I love this cover so much is because it's gruesome. And being a huge horror fan and a bit of a gore hound, this kind of stuff right here is right up my alley. And I always say, a little bit of grotesque art isn't going to hurt anybody. So. From the cover alone, do I think this book's batting a thousand? Yeah, I do. But that's just the cover. Now it's time to get down to what I like to call the nitty gritty. But before we do, I just want to take the time to mention to any new viewers out there or any new subscribers to my channel that if at any time during this review or any of my past reviews, you guys notice that I look up and down at the camera quite a bit or it sounds like I'm reading to you guys, the reason for that is... I keep my notes in front of me. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. The first one being, with the notes, I find it helps the review flow a lot smoother. Second, with the notes in front of me, let's say I'm reading part of the review and I get stuck. I can backtrack and then keep going. And third, well, basically, when it comes to memorizing text, it has never been one of my strong suits. So therefore, the notes are actually a help aid. So if you guys are cool with that, awesome. We'll get through this review, and we'll be on our merry way. Alrighty? So what do you say we get started? Now, before I get to reviewing the stories that are in this issue, I want to go into a little uh, back, uh, back history on Creepy itself. So, back in the day, uh, Frederick Wortham and the CCA, otherwise known as the Comics Code of America, nearly destroyed horror comics. A magazine publisher by the name of James Warren, who was the original publisher of Forrest J. Ackerman's legendary Famous Monsters of Filmland, uh, revived the art of graphic horror storytelling with the legendary Creepy Magazine. Uh, at 35 cents, wow, just, just take that in for a second, 35 cents, when now they cost $3.99. <laughs> What a time. Anyway, at 35 cents, oversized and black and white, uh, it brought quality artwork and writing back to the industry. Dominantly composed of fuzzy black and white reprints of four color stories from EC and other pre-code horror comics. Now, it would not be unfair to say that uh, were it not for the three magazines, which were creepy, which was an anthology horror story series, Eerie, which was uh, a series that featured sci-fi, fantasy, and horror stories following various characters in existing series, and Vampirella, which was a uh, magazine featuring adult-themed horror and fantasy stories, which many either hosted or featured the scantily clad female from The Planet Draculon, uh, for the survival and resurgence of horror comics. Now, due to health problems, James Warren retired in the 1980s, and the magazines folded. Now, Creepy had a very long run, from 1964 to 1985, and a 9.2 CGC copy of Creepy Number 1 recently sold for nearly 500 bucks. How about that, huh? Now, Dark Horse clearly understands how much horror comics mean to a lot of us fans. Since 2009, they revived it, and they have continually worked to honor and extend Warren's legacy. Creepy has been a horror institution for 50 years. Then as now, Creepy sets and meets an almost impossible high sorry, impossibly high standard for horror, writing, and artwork. It's true, man. Creepy 
they are the tops. Now, issue 17 is not an exception. It is hard to write about the authors and artists because the anthology format allows for several different creators to showcase their talents, and it allows for stories to run from dark fantasy to sci-fi horror to psychological terror. Now, the first story in this issue is called The Human Condition, which is done by Paul Tobin, and the art is done by Juan, and I hope I say his last name right, Ferreira. If I'm not saying it right, sorry, but that's what I'm going with. Uh, it's a story about someone discovering the uselessness of life and death. And it's simple but chilling, and it has a vaguely nihilist theme to it. It's dark stuff, but it's classic, psychological, supernatural horror. It's an awesome story. And actually, this scene on the cover is from the first story. Uh, the second story is called Arrangement of Skin. It's a story by Jay Torres, and the art is done by Ron Salas. It's a fascinating story with a Rod Serling slash O. Henry twist. If those of you who don't know who Ron Serling is, watch The Twilight Zone from the old days. Then you'll know who Ron Serling is. <laughs> um, tempted by money, a taxidermist crosses the line for a shameless client. His acts go from distasteful to criminal. And in the end, well, let's say he receives his comeuppance. This story, I think, would fit very easily into the Warren-era creepy or an issue of EC's Tales from the Crypt. Now, the third story in this uh, issue is called Duel of the Monster. It's a story done by the legendary Archie Goodwin, and the art is done by Angelo Torres. Now, Archie Goodwin was a master at this type of story, and he'd been writing them for decades, and th this is just awesome, awesome stuff. This is a classic monster versus monster horror story with a great twist at the end. Torres's artwork is, to put it simply, atmospheric and wonderfully gothic. It is amazing. And when it's done in black and white, it's it's got an added something to it. Uh, this is probably, I think, the best piece among the group of stories in this issue. Um, as an added bonus, uh, Sergio Aragones of Mad Fame uh, provided a fine uh, frontispiece and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically like a, a one page, like a splash page almost, right after you open the cover. It's cool looking. Um, his horror humor is always welcome, but most of the in-between work comes from the team of Dan Braun and Peter Bagg, who continue to give us delightfully uh, droll monster horror uh, sorry, droll monster and horror humor, uh, vaguely reminiscent of some of the uh, William Gaines early Mad comics. Awesome stuff, by the way. Um, other intro and closure sections include the classic uh, Dear Uncle Creepy Letters, uh, which are pretty cool. Uh, it's a section in which um, the host answers, you know, fan mail and whatnot. And then there's the Corpse Power, which is... Um, interviews with different horror artists and writers. Now, none of these stories have happy endings. You know, the Scooby Gang does not unmask the bad guy, and the hero does not rescue the victim from the clutches of the evil madman. Uh, this is horror, plain and simple. Um, creepy is meant to be the best of anthology horror. It is not, and never will be, for everybody. Uh, Creepy is a classic horror comic for fans of horror comics. Uh, and it is, as its masthead proudly proclaims, the finest in illustrated horror. So there you go, folks. There's your little uh, dose of creepiness for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumbs down. If I get a thumbs down, it just means I gotta work harder on pleasing you guys. That's right. Also, if you enjoy reviews like this one, take a look around my channel. 
I got plenty of them. Uh, I do a new review every Thursday and Saturday if I'm able to. Uh, Thursday being a current comic, Saturday being one of either a back issue book, a hot topic book, or something that just really catches my eye. Uh, if you're into unboxings, normally I do an unboxing every two months since I am a member of the Marvel Collector Corps. When I mentioned on Wednesday, uh, there was a little mix-up, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting my October box, but everything is fixed now, and I will be getting my December box, which is going to be cool because it's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy themed, so I'm curious what's going to be in there. Um, if you're into um, backstories on lame comic book characters, well, every Wednesday, I pick one at random, and um, I give you the dirt on them when they were created, who created them, uh, when they made their first appearance, yada yada yada. And I just wanted to add, uh, I know this past Wednesday I did, um, I chose Son of Satan, and um, to any of you out there who thought maybe I was ragging on the character or anything, I wasn't. I just picked them, and trust me, I, I think he is a cool character and everything, but as as I said, he's uh, not okay. He's not really a lame character, but he's more. Uh, how can I say it? Uh, the word's not coming to me right now. Not popular, I guess you could say. Anyway, I don't want I don't want to go too far off topic here. And um, also, if you're into comic reviews and whatnot, I got plenty of those as well. Also, while looking around my channel, make sure to like any video you, you watch. Like or dislike, I should say. Because let's face it, no one's perfect, right? And also, comment on any video, because I love reading your comments. And then, when all is said and done, before leaving, make sure to click that subscribe button. Alrighty, so that's it for now. Um, till tomorrow because I do have a um, random act of kindness unboxing for you guys and I'm really excited about it so uh, again I'm gonna keep it at that it's a random act of kindness and I'm not gonna indulge any more on it because I still want to keep it a surprise and then um, on Saturday you got your weekend comic review alrighty so till then this is Punisher 88 Signing off. See ya.